Access to democracy is made possible by donations from the following organizations. Thomson Reuters, a global company with expertise and insight to unravel complex situations in the areas of law, tax, compliance, government, and media. Their worldwide network of journalists and editors keep customers up to speed on relevant global events. Thomson Reuters, The Answer Company. Crutchfield Dermatology, a full-service treatment center and medi-spa in Egan. Their goal is to help you look good and feel great with beautiful skin. With service built around courtesy, dignity, and respect, Mayo-trained Dr. Charles Crutchfield personally treats each patient and is acknowledged as one of the nation's best physicians. The Minnesota Twins are looking forward to another great season in 2023, led by the return of All-Stars Carlos Correa and Brian Buxton. With the return of numerous players who were injured in 2022 and some new acquisitions, another division crown and a return to the World Series are in their sights. Established in 2007, 45th Parallel Spirits was among the first 50 micro distilleries in the United States. Based in New Richmond, Wisconsin, all aspects of production occur at our facility. If you're interested in visiting and learning more about the 45th Parallel Distillery, please check our website and plan a visit to tour our facility and taste our spirits. True Stone Financial, with locations in Minnesota and Wisconsin, has proudly served as members since 1939. True Stone engages, educates, and supports its members to ensure they have the tools to empower their financial well-being. True Stone Financial, your neighborhood credit union. Learn more at truestone.org. Welcome to this uh, edition of Access to Democracy. I am today's guest host, retired Justice Paul Anderson. My guest on today's show is Robert Hennessy. Now, we we'll give, give you a heads up. Today's show is going to be a little bit different from the standard Access to Democracy shows, but it will continue to focus on the show's main theme, that being that for a civil democracy to thrive, even survive, there is a need for transparency in document, in government. Now, we are going to focus today, Bob, you know this, on an unsolved mystery. And uh, it happened six decades ago. We were basically only turning 20. It is a murder. It occurred in Dallas, Texas, on November 22nd, uh, uh, 1963. It had global connections, Cuban invasion, Castro's turn towards communism, the communist threat. It was all over the news as to what we were going to do with respect to Cuba and Castro. We had the Bay of Pigs, failed invasion, other failed incursions, and we had any number of people out there who wanted to go into Cuba and take it back. But they were disgruntled with Kennedy for numerous reasons, which we'll get into, one of which he was he, having an emerging dialogue with uh, Khrushchev. It involved some pretty important people, Alan Dulles, the CIA, and a lot of operatives. So, uh, Bob, one of the questions I'm going to focus on, this is a never-ending mystery. and. There are still documents that have yet to be released. What's coming up with respect to the release of documents? Well, <clears throat> the documents were all um, were ordered to be released uh, back in the 90s, uh, and they were going to be uh, even documents that were uh, deemed to be uh, a, uh, serious documents of, of national security, et cetera, were supposed to be done on 2017. That got kicked over to 2020, and that got kicked over to this year. And what's supposed to be done now is in May of this year, all documents are supposed to be produced except those found by the president to be a violation or a potential violation of our national security. In all of the other instances, the CIA showed up in the White House right before the release. Are they going to do that again? I don't know. I mean, it's a different group within the CIA leadership, et cetera. I don't know. 
But I know 60 years is enough time to produce documents that were supposed to really been produced back in the 90s. So uh, the assassination and it's who did it and what, it, it's really a never-ending mystery, isn't it? There have been a, a lot of theories, and there have been a lot of people in good faith who have said, we want the answer, and, and they've spent time, enormous time. There are a number, of, I mean, there's just huge number of books have been written on the Kennedy assassination. So, Bob, how did it come that you got involved in this? I mean, you're a prominent attorney, you worked in the law. I know that you were a, a friend and protege of uh, Walter Mondale, and so you, I, uh, how did you get involved? I um, got involved, I got a call from um, Vice President Mondale. And he said, you want to come out to, New York, uh, out to Washington, the church committee, which I had an interest in, and he served on. He said, we're going to have a seminar at Georgetown. So I went out there, uh, and th at that, that seminar, I picked up this information uh, that there were photos of anti-Castro Cubans in Dealey Plaza on the day of the assassination, and so, that's what started it. So CIA people, ex-CIA people were in Dallas on the 22nd. That's right. And so you promised us today you would name names. Um, and I'm going to put up a picture of someone you said you're going to name a name. Here it is. Who is this? That is William Pauley. And I'm not saying William Pauley was in Dallas on that day, but I'm saying the background with regard to the Kennedy assassination um, clearly requires us to answer the question, what did he know? So he was an anti-Castro uh, operative, is that right? Yeah, he, he, was, he had been a long time involvement with South American countries. Uh, he was our ambassador to Brazil. He was our ambassador to Peru. He had ownership interest of, uh, uh, in, um, Cuba. in Cuba. Uh, he was a friend of Eisenhower. He, he was a very good friend of President Eisenhower. So he was very well connected. He was a co-founder of uh, the Flying Tigers in the World War II. That's correct. And so, why is he a party of interest? Well, he's a party of interest because he was doing some of the planning for going into Cuba, not, not all of the Bay of Pigs, but after the Bay of Pigs. And, and what he said at one of those uh, times with, that he was on an island off of C Cuba, about the Kennedy assassination. So, I understand, and he was a powerful enough guy to get a meeting with Kennedy within weeks of the failed Bay of Pigs invasion. That's correct. It was, uh, it was uh, set up through President Eisenhower. What was the purpose of that meeting? He had a new plan for going into Cuba, and that new plan involved the use of, he gave the number 10,000 Marines to go in and circle Havana and then basically engage in a, what would have been a civil war, but we would be in there with 10,000 Marines uh, against Castro. So what was Kennedy's response? Kennedy's response was, and this is all in a book that, it, that it, this is in the book that, it, that is written about Pauly. He has a, a uh, biography that's written. His, his, Kennedy's response is, he was not going to have any blood spent by, by American soldiers going into Cuba. So he basically well, rejected the plan. What was Pauly's reaction to Kennedy and that going forward? Well, it, I mean, it was a civil reaction, but it was basically uh, Kennedy just didn't have the, didn't have it to run this country. Because Pauly also thought that Kennedy didn't follow through and give the support for the Bay of Pigs, right? Well, yeah, it, well, that was part of it. I mean, there was, the Bay of Pigs was a, 
a very s serious loss in, in terms of our stature in the world. So let's move forward. We have the Cuban Missile Crisis in uh, October of 62. We came very, very close to nuclear war, okay? And both Kennedy and Khrushchev backed off, and they had some kind of an understanding. What was Pauli's reaction to that, re uh, solving it? Oh, it was just the opposite of what Kennedy's reaction was. His reaction was this was a, a absolutely perfect time where we're at a, um, at odds with the um, Soviet Union, and we ought to go in right now and they, and not make any deals with with uh, the Soviet Union. He was willing to risk nuclear war. There were a lot of people who talked about the risk of nuclear war and, and what would it meant to go into Cuba. So now let's ratchet forward to June of uh, 63. Pauli was wanting to embarrass Kennedy, right? Pauli uh, provided uh, his, his uh, boat uh, which it's is a, a yacht. It was a yacht, it not, was a, a, yacht. not a boat. Yeah, for this attack, he took people out there. He, there were people who flew into the the small, uh, and I think we we call it an atoll, uh, uh, which uh, it was a small island. Yeah, and they there were people, and the name of it, if we're writing uh, for that when it's written up, it's called uh, the Bayo Folly. Uh, 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 mission. What did that mission succeed? No, it, it was a disaster. They sent in a, a number of, and nobody. They never came out. What was the purpose? The purpose initially, as I understood it, was to, to find two Russian engineers who were maintaining nuclear uh, capacity in Cuba, which would have been a violation of the agreements that Kennedy had made uh, with regard to the Cuban Missile Crisis. So he wanted to get information that would embarrass Kennedy, and he had some allies in American government that were working with him on that. That's right. There was uh, Senator Eastland from, from Mississippi and, his, and the people in his staff. Now, you told me a fascinating fact. He had a consultant working with him on this mission a consultant who had kind of shady background connection with the CIA. Who well, was that? He did. Gerald Patrick Hemming, H-E-M-M-I-N-G. And so did he continue to work with Hemming? He worked w with Hemming in this, this, his effort to go into Cuba as, as part of, of um, uh, the Pauli are the Bayo Poly. Now I want to bring back this picture of Polly and something he said that day and to a John uh, Martino in answer to John Martino was ex-mafia business interests in Cuba and basically Martino said uh, what uh, SOBs the Kennedys were, and uh, they're rotten. And this is what, and I, I'm going to ask you to verify this, but this is what Polly allegedly said. JFK. And there are people who exactly know how to do it. This was a statement made in June of 63. That's a pretty damning statement. Well, the source of that statement is a guy named Richard Billing, and Billings was a editor of um, the uh, a Time um, Time Life okay. Time Life mag magazine, and he um, has told that story. Uh, of, because he was there that night. So he actually heard this. He heard this, and he has told that story, and it, it is on the Internet if you want to listen to that. Uh, uh. 
you can so, go right. to get that story of what happened that night and the assertion that uh, Pauli made that statement. Now, this is scary. This is in June of 63, six months before Kennedy was assassinated. Somebody says we're going to get him. And he knows people that to do it. Now, one of the people connected with Polly was this guy. You got to come in close to see him. Gerald Patrick Hemmings. You see the arrow pointing to him. This picture was taken on November 22nd, 1963. And that's Gerald Patrick Hemmings. That he is. was a consultant to Polly. Pauly said he knew people who exactly knew how to kill Kennedy, and Hemings is there. Can you describe Hemings and what his role is for us? Well, Hemings was a, a former Marine, and he had had um, been first. Uh, he had, he had been supportive of Castro, but he, he he believed that Castro was going to communism, and he therefore. Uh, he, he changed, and on the day of the assassination, and this is this is recorded uh, in uh, statements made by the, by uh, two individuals. There was a man who was running down or walking down about th three blocks away from the Dealey, Dealey Plaza, and in that he, he was a very Tall man, six 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 five. Uh, something. Hemings is yeah, six yeah, six six seven. Right, right. and this man, man was also, and this man was a, had the crew crew cut, as shown by the picture in, in this, and he then was had one thing that was really different. He was carrying a rifle. What? He was carrying a rifle. Wait, wait, wait. He was in Dealey Plaza. I mean, no, here's a— outside of Dealey Plaza. Just a, outside of Dealey Plaza. Yeah, but two blocks or blocks, okay. you know. And, and he um, was carrying a rifle. And the guys who, who were going to see Kennedy, you know, they talked about this. And I mean, what is this? You know, who could he be? He's got to be a Secret Service or some, you know, somebody who's got the authority to be carrying a rifle. And anyway, after Kennedy was murdered, two of those men went to—one went to the FBI and one went to the Dallas sheriff, okay. and they gave statements. And it's really that they're, they're equally—you know, the statements describe the man they saw. But the FBI statement goes beyond that. It, on the bottom of the, their statement, the 302, which if there's any lawyers out there, they know what that is, um, they write the name Hemming with a question mark. So he was known to authorities and they wrote his name. Now, we don't have time to go into that, but there was another CIA person there. His name is Rip Robertson. He yeah. was identified as being in Dallas that same day. That's true, and Rip Robertson is one of the two men who went in on the Bay of Pigs as Amer They were the Americans that went in so on the Bay of Pigs. So he was one of the two Americans. Yeah, the other was a, a, a gentleman named Lynch. And he's invested in uh, uh, freeing Cuba, and he, he was in Dallas, okay? So now we have Hemings and Rip Robertson. I want to go to another photo. And see what. Who are these people? Oh, I see. I have it labeled at the top. The three tramps. Yeah. This this relates to um, a gentleman that I that I can really speak about is the gentleman in the middle is Frank Sturgis. In the middle. Frank Sturgis, the assassin. Frank Sturgis, not only the assassin, the, the Watergate Frank Sturgis. So he's. He's a well-known CIA operative, assassin, and he also participated in Watergate, huh? Well, he, he was a part of the arrest at Watergate, and, and the other man is, is uh, E. Howard Hunt, who was also arrested as part of Watergate. Well, these guys look—I mean, I'm not sure. What's happening here? 
what happened was in in the short period after um, or it's about a two hour period after Kennedy was killed the the man who worked in the railroad um, called the pl oh, police. He was in the switching tower, right? Switching tower. And he called and said, I want, I got, I have information about what I saw uh, at, right after the assassination. Um, and that, what he saw were that three men ran down from the grassy knoll. Down. This is the infamous grassy knoll. The infamous grassy knoll. Ran down to a coal car, that's C-O-A-L, and that car was on the tracks, and so a, ban uh, a, a um, police officer from the Dallas police, uh, who was, was there, um, and he's shown in these pictures, uh, his name is Marvin Dave, uh, Weiss, and he then went down with his partner and a couple more, and there they, he is in the front, right there. And he arrested. The, the, they went into the, they climbed up the ladder to get into the coal car, went down there, and they arrested the three of them. Did they were, arrest them or apprehend them? Well, they, I, I don't know what you did. They, they put them and, and they marched them off. I mean, this is a kind of a tricky question yeah, to well, you. Yeah, throwing one to you. Yeah. But they they took them from um, the coal car up to be uh, up to the, where they, they book people, and the, that's a picture of, of again of, of Weiss and uh, the three of them being marched off in there did in the Weiss, background. Did Weiss testify before the Warren Commission? Did who? Did Weiss testify no. before the Warren, he never testified before the Warren Commission. I can't find a, uh, a, uh, a what they call a 302, and that's the, the, the FBI questioning you, and then they, they provide what you said. And he never did that. But, but, but wait a minute now. You have an uninterested person in a switching tower saying, I saw three men run down and get inside a coal car, basically to hide there. They're apprehended, and we have the picture of them. They're identified as Sturgis and Hunt, but they're never booked. Well, they are identified by Sturgis and Hunt, but it's, it's down the road. It's not right that day. So they, at the time, they don't follow up on this, and so it's not... In oh no! They, there is nothing in the Warren report that indicates this arrest was made. Nothing. That's incredible. Well, it's it's a fact. I mean, that they have nothing in it. And when they are taken in to be booked, um, there are really seven of these pictures. There were three uh, uh, newspaper photographers who took various pictures. Some took three pictures. Some. Uh, I guess it was, uh, they took seven in, in total. And um, that's one of them, and then there's, there are others. And, and they- So, I gotta, we're running out of time. I'm gonna show another picture, and I'm gonna throw a name out there. Marita Lorenz. Okay, Marita. Castro's mistress. Yeah. A CIA operative, maybe, maybe not. Who is she? Ca she is, a woman who Frank Sturgis uh, got to be um, a operative for the CIA. Uh, she was first. Uh, she was a, a, a um, uh, had a relationship with Fidel Castro, as shown by that picture. And but later on, she she was working with the CIA, and in that uh, she says that on the days just before the assassination of Kennedy on November 22nd, there was a two-car caravan that drove from, from uh, uh, Miami to Dallas, 
And eventually... Uh, but who was in that? Sturgis? Hemmings? Sturgis, Hemmings. Um, and someone like Oswald. Yeah, someone named Oz. So we don't know that. Now, we have in FBI's biography, it says that FBI on the Saturday after the assassination told Johnson that there were two Oswalds. Well, I, I know you have, have recently read the book that, that basically sets that forth, that there, there were, there were multiple the, Oswalds. And the second Oswald actually jumped out of plane shortly after the assassination. Well, he, that, that's uh, relayed earlier on okay. by, in another book. So now we're running out of time, but Marina Lorenz basically told her story that involves Sturgis and Hunt. Is that correct? Yeah. Me, Marina Lorenz told the story a couple of times. She sto told it to a, a, a Minnesotan, a, a guy, um, Jim Rothstein. Oh, Rothstein's the guy to whom Sturgis said that he was on the grassy knoll. Yeah, that's that's okay. right. And Rothstein's the guy who, who, who I know that that's true. He arrested uh, Sturgis on the. It was the uh, night of Halloween in 1977. So, in order to wrap things up, Hunt sued uh, Spotlight and. Marina Lorenz for telling that story. Well, they, they sued Spotlight, which was it was a defamation case, and uh, they sued and uh, the, mag uh, the the Spotlight won, and Spotlight um, had a jury verdict that that said basically we don't believe that Hunt was in Washington as he claims. In fact, the. The foreman of that jury said that Mark Lane asked them to find the improbable, which they did, that the CIA was actually involved in the killing of a United States president. That is the statement by the, by the uh, woman who was, was the, uh, on a jury and was, as you say, uh, she was the, the um, uh, to, to sum so, up, Bob, is what's going on here. We have an ongoing mystery that is unsolved, and the American people have a right to get it solved. I believe that's true, and the most, you know, it all could come to an end in terms of the documents in May of this year. So, I mean, he's supposed to—that's— the, all the deletions that have occurred with regard to these documents are supposed to be ended and that would you So Bob, get it. you have raised many questions. We left much on the table. Maybe we're going to have to have you come back and put a few more pieces in this uh, unsolved mystery mosaic. Thank you for being here today mm -hmm. on Access to Democracy. You raised more questions than you've answered, but that's what we need in this. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.